So we have some additional evidence from a 2010 study that suggests that younger children than three, in fact, two-year-olds, can pass a false belief test when they are tested indirectly, right? And then this turns out to lead to our, our familiar implication by this point that language is often extraordinarily helpful, but not explicitly required for representing others' mental states, in this case, that they can hold a false belief. But the question is, how can you, test, what does it mean to test someone indirectly? And the idea is that we can gauge children's spontaneous responses by, say, looking at how long they look somewhere to events that are shown. And by Largi, I'm going to mispronounce this name horribly, by Yargian, by Largian and friends uh, argue that this is an easier task than requiring the children to answer a question directly using language. So you're, get, you're bypassing any cognitive processing difficulties that are preventing them from showing you that they can understand that other people have false beliefs. And so let me show you how this works. So uh, in the familiarization trial, you have a toy standing between a yellow and a green box, and you have a female uh, who enters the scene and plays with this toy briefly and then hides it inside the green box, and she just kind of hangs out there with her hands in the green box until the trial's ended. So that's the familiarization trial. And in trials two and three, the agent reaches inside the green box as though to grasp her toy and then pauses. So you get used to the idea of visually what's going on as she is looking for that toy, she's interested in it, she likes to know where it is, and then she's gonna come back and look for it, right? So all this is communicated just visually with no words whatsoever. So that's during familiarization. And then, belief induction. So they have uh, two versions of this. One, in the belief induction trial, the first one, the agent's not there anymore. The girl's not there, right? But in the agent's absence, this toy moves itself from the green box to the yellow box and then hangs out in the yellow box, right? Or another thing is maybe that happens where the lady's here and then she sees the green, the toy move from the green box to the yellow box, right? But then when she's no longer watching, then the toy moves itself back to the green box, right? So in this case, she didn't see it move to the yellow box. So as adults, we would assume she still thinks it's in the green box. In this case, she saw it move to the yellow box. So we as adults would assume she therefore will look in the yellow box for it. Uh, but when she's not there, it moves back to the green. So in either case, whether it's gonna end up in the yellow box or the green box, she didn't see where it last moved to. So again, as adults who can understand that she can have a false belief, we assume she's gonna look where she last saw it, which in, up here is gonna be the green box and in this case is going to be the yellow box. And it turns out, um, you know, then when you test kids, the way that you test them is you have her reach either into the yellow or into the green box and pause, right? Because that's where she's searching for her toy. And in each case, right, the infants expected the agent to reach where she falsely believed the, the toy to be hidden. So if she last saw it move into the yellow box, she expected this one and was really surprised when the lady knew to look here. If the lady last saw it in the green box, the kids expected her to look there and were really surprised when she somehow magically realized it was in the yellow box, right? What does that mean? Well, they're behaving like adults. These two-year-olds can understand that this lady has a false belief about where her toy is, right? So the same procedure actually was done with 15-month-olds who turned out to have similar expectations and reactions. And in fact, in a nice summary article in 2016, they have many more examples of children under two demonstrating understanding of false beliefs in this kind of spontaneous response task like this. I mean, completely nonverbal, right? But just expectations about how the world works and what people's mental states are given what they've seen. And in fact, even younger, there were some studies showing six and seven-month-olds, right? Like very young infants now are behaving as if they understand other agents can have false beliefs again using this kind of looking time like where do you where do you look right when are you surprised by and and there's actually eeg evidence from six month olds that show that these six month olds anticipate that the agent's going to search for the ball when she falsely believes it to be present but not when she falsely believes it was absent so you're seeing all kinds of evidence from very young children that they know when people believe false things, which means they know other people can believe false things, which means since you as the baby are watching this and know it to be false, those other people have different mental states, different perspectives than you do. And you know this at like six months. And so as a final sort of, uh, sort of demonstration of this really, uh, there's some evidence that two-year-olds can pass a verbal false belief task when they're tested indirectly, right? So not just, you know, watching situations in the world happen now, but actually doing the same kind of 
verbal interactions we have with some of our direct false belief tests, but now we're sort of testing the kids indirectly. How do we do this? So one way, which is very clever, is children are watching a typical direct false belief scene along with an adult subject who is the one who was asked about where a character would look for a toy. So, you know, where is Sir Didymus going to look for his marble? And you're asking the adult, and the kid is just looking at this whole thing happening. And the children look longer. They're surprised when the adult subject responds incorrectly and sort of acts as if the adult doesn't understand about false beliefs and sort of magically knows about the toy's current location, right? So they're just watching this happen, and they're surprised. So it seems like maybe part of the issue before with our direct false belief tasks is they weren't really getting at children's knowledge because at two, it seems like, and in fact, as we saw younger, it seems like kids have a pretty good idea that other people can have false beliefs.